All right, so now we'll talk about enzyme binding with the substrate and what happens after that occurs. And so before we do that, let's talk about a feature of enzymes. And that is that an enzyme has an active site. And I've drawn this with a little semicircle here and a little square shape there. And the active site is a very specific shape within that enzyme that matches a site on this substrate here. And so the fact that there is an active site that matches a site on the substrate is what gives enzymes specificity. Enzymes are specific for a particular substrate and some of its features. And so when we see these features fit into the enzyme's active site, that is what we mean when we're talking about an enzyme having specificity. And so an enzyme has this specificity. And for that reason, you might hear enzyme substrate binding referred to as a lock and key model. And essentially what that means is that the enzyme is the lock and it has these sort of spatial characteristics. And the substrate is a key that has the exact same spatial characteristics that allows the enzyme and the substrate to bond. And so specificity and the lock and key model are often ways that you'll here referred to that feature of the substrate fitting very, very nicely into the enzyme. Now there's another model, and this is known as the induced fit model. And essentially what happens with this is that the substrate binds with the enzyme initially. And notice that it fits into that site, but it's not a perfect fit. It's a slightly looser interaction. Sometimes the fact that it's a loose interaction is what allows an enzyme to have many different substrates because all they need to do is fit in somewhat well into that site. So you have a, a stage of initial binding where the substrate first joins with the enzyme and it's sort of a, a loose spatial fit. But then under the induced fit model, you have what's called an induced fit where the enzyme and the substrate to a degree actually change their conformation. So once the substrate kind of loads into this enzyme, the enzyme will slightly change shape. It will go undergo a conformational change that will allow for a much tighter fit with the substrate and the enzyme. And this is actually the tightest fit that you will have, the closest binding and this is where you experience the transition state, where you've sort of bypassed that activation energy and the transition state is a very, very, very tight conformation where the binding between substrate and enzyme is very good. So that's what we mean by induced fit. After that occurs, then you have the reaction. The enzyme will, in one way or another, catalyze that reaction. And notice that here we've just cleaved this substrate into two pieces, but it still is resting in that enzyme. And then the last step is you see the product released. And so what this enzyme did is it took this one substrate molecule and instead, and it broke it into two different components. So it broke a bond and now it will release the product. And notice that here the enzyme has returned back to its initial shape. It's no longer bent in this induced fit. So with enzymes and substrates, there's a lock and key model that uh, says that the substrate is the perfect fit for that enzyme. And that is what underscores the specificity, meaning that an enzyme is specific for its substrate and vice versa. And so the substrate fits into the enzyme and it has that specificity. And then if you're using the induced fit model, then, and this is something that occurs a lot, the enzyme will undergo a conformational change as soon as the substrate is loaded. And that conformational change creates even tighter binding and that helps the enzyme catalyze that reaction, in this case, breaking apart this molecule. And then you see the product released and the enzyme return to the shape that it was in in the initial condition. And once again, a catalyst does not change between the beginning and the end of a reaction. It will be the same at the end as it was in the beginning. And perhaps the only thing that might differ is it might work temporarily as an electron carrier or it might help with acid base enzymatic catalysis or um, it will undergo a slight conformational 
change under the induced fit model, and that's what helps it act as a catalyst for this. And so know the difference between these two models, the lock and key model and the induced fit model. Know what they mean, and, and especially the induced fit model where the enzyme undergoes a conformational change. That's a key word you'll see a lot. If an enzyme undergoes a conformational change once the substrate is loaded, that means that you're looking at an induced fit. And then be aware of this idea of specificity, that a substrate will fit exactly into an active site of an enzyme that's defined by the protein structure and all those protein interactions. And once you understand those things, then I think it becomes clear the way in which enzymes can catalyze different reactions, and you'll be able to answer questions when they ask you about specific components of this process. Thank you.